Your lens is dirty. That's better. Greetings viewers, Eric the car guy here. I said viewers this time. I got in trouble for calling it the singular last time. I guess there's more than one of you out there. Today we have, to some of you, what might seem to be a familiar sight, and you would be correct. This is the 1998 uh, Honda Civic that I put the engine in twice. Uh, the first time was due to the fact that the engine ran out of oil, and the second time was due to the engine ran out of oil. But we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about the fact that it is back. And what it's back for is rough, harsh shifting and a check engine light, which it kind of left here with a check engine light. There was no two sensor uh, code that it had, which I'm also going to address today. But more importantly, we need to address the problem with the transmission shifting. So what I propose is, is that we verify the complaint and we take it out for a little test drive and see exactly how this vehicle is shifting and if indeed there is a problem and how we're going to solve it. Let's do that. I already see a problem. <laughs> see, caught it. Um, I've got a pretty good idea of what's happening here. So, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you do too because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it in the title. But let's, uh, let's take this for a drive and see how it's shifting. Uh, as you can see, the Speedo is, is jumping around a bit. And I haven't even put it in drive yet. All right, let's see how this thing is shifting. Kind of slid into that gear, slid into the next one. But I'm, I'm not going 70 miles an hour. I'm probably going more like 45, 50. But the speedometer doesn't seem to know that. And I've got a pretty good idea as to why. And how that affects the transmission is, the transmission is shifted electronically, and it needs to know how fast you're going to know what gear to be in, and amongst a few other things. So without an accurate speed signal, the transmission's not gonna shift correctly. And I have a feeling that that, that is pretty much the cause of our complaint here. All right, now I've spared you uh, having to listen to the beeping, but the OBD2 connector is up underneath the dash here. And I have the scanner hooked up, and we're just going to see what it comes up with. Oh, the intake air temperature sensor, maybe that's unplugged. As we thought, a PO501 vehicle speed sensor, and the O2 heater circuit, which uh, we knew about also. So we've got three codes, um, vehicle speed sensor, intake air temperature. I'm gonna look for that. Uh, the fact that it's, that it's high might mean that it's open, so I'm thinking that might be either unplugged or something funny's going on there. Maybe it's a sensor. I hardly ever see those go bad, but we'll see. But this is the guy that I think we're uh, most concerned about. Here is the intake air temperature sensor. I don't see that it's unplugged, but maybe it was unplugged with the key on it sometime. I'm just going to reset that code and sort of recheck things. But our prize is actually this guy right down here, um, located in the back of the transmission right there. And given the fact that we, we aren't even moving and it seems to be sending out a signal, uh, throwing the speedometer all over the place, and given the high failure rate of this sensor, I'm really just gonna go ahead and replace the sensor. It's, it's a high failure rate of these sensors on Hondas in particular. So like I said, I, I'm just, uh, it may be, may be a shotgun approach if you wanna call it that, but you know, I've, I've seen enough of these that were bad to, to say with confidence that uh, with a speed sensor code and a speedometer that's jumping around like that, I'm just gonna replace it. I think what I will start out by doing is removing this part of the air uh, filter uh, snorkel. That way we have that out of the way and have better access. It's always nice to have good access to where you're working. So now I'm having second thoughts. Um, I hate putting out information like this, just shotgunning parts. So I've had a thought. What if I just unplug the sensor and then observe the speed sensor reading? Um, I shouldn't see the speedometer move at all if the sensor is unplugged. If it does move like it did before with the sensor plugged in, 
then my problem may be elsewhere. But I believe that if I unplug the sensor and it's not behaving the way it did before, that I can reasonably conclude that the speed sensor is the problem. So my quick test is gonna be, let's just unplug it and take it for a drive and see what it's like now. I think it'll be easy enough to just reach down and unplug this sensor. There we go. It's now disconnected. Now if you remember from before, all I had to do was start it up and it would act up. Now it's not acting up. Idle's a little strange though. Let's drive it and see uh, what the speedo does. Okay, back out on the road. It's not moving. Transmission shifting fine. Okay, a quick test for Honda speed sensor is if the speedometer jumps all over the place, you unplug it and take it for a drive. If it no longer jumps all over the place, replace the speed sensor. Let's do exactly that. All right, in a way I'm doing this more for you than I am for me so that you can get a better view of what I'm doing, but I'm gonna remove this snorkel by unplugging the intake air temperature sensor. Also, gonna loosen the screw clamp for the snorkel. And then really, I can just pull this guy off of here. Maybe loosen it up a little more. It's just a Phillips head screw. Holds that on. Now we've got all kinds of viewing. Now I'm just gonna, it's a 12 millimeter. And just remove the fastener. And hopefully the sensor, yeah, it's behaving. And just sort of twist it back and forth a little bit. It's just an o-ring that we're trying to overcome here. And there we go. We've got ourselves a speed sensor. Voila. Now some of you may notice that that's actually part of the uh, female connector that we need to take out of there before we uh, do the new sensor because if you look here um, you'll see that uh, well, it's actually a fair amount of corrosion there. It could also be contributing to the problem, so I'm going to hit this with a little bit of contact cleaner uh, just to make sure that all is right with the world, but actually what I just noticed is that this center terminal, now I'm looking at this, is still stuck down inside here from the speed sensor itself, so it looks like this terminal right here corroded away and that's the reason for our signal loss. I hope you can see that in there. I'm going to get a pair of pliers and pull that out for you. So that is the source of our problem. It's actually an electrical connection failure right there. It's just rotted away. But one thing I'm going to do, you may note that that is a big hole in the transmission and not wanting to get anything down in there. I'm just going to take my rag and sort of put it in the hole for now to keep any debris from getting down into that, that uh, hole in the transmission while we have the speed sensor out. Okay, remember this guy? I'm gonna try to pull that connector out, or that pin, I should say, if I can get a hold of it. Sort of disintegrating as I go. There we go. That, my friends, is the terminal that came right out of the speed sensor, which is the cause of our failure of our signal getting to it. This here is electrical contact cleaner. It's specifically designed to do this. And that's eat away the corrosion on terminals like this.
I can see that it's been fully seated. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of contact cleaner again. My can is old and it doesn't like to spray too well. Okay, got that. Now I'm gonna go get that other piece out of the inside of the speed sensor. Here's our speed sensor and there's this plastic retaining clip that I want to get back. There we go. Quite a bit of corrosion, which is the reason for this failure. So I, I suspect some moisture got down in here, caused all this green yuck, which spells corrosion. If you're curious like me, really like to see what that looks like down in there. You can see how that terminal just rotted away. And that would be the signal. So like a little bit of moisture or something got down in there and a little bit of electrolysis happened and we're now putting a speed sensor in. And some of you might be asking if I can repair this one. I, I don't believe it's really worth it. Uh, I think just replacing it's the way to go. There we go. It's all clipped down in there securely now. I'm gonna take the weather pack, or the, put that around the outside, because we don't want the same thing to happen to our new sensor. And I believe it will seat the rest of the way when the new part is installed and we connect it up. Okay, what I'm gonna do before I put the new sensor is I'm gonna seat that seal down inside here by pushing the connector in. And that pushes it all evenly all the way down in. There we go. Actually took a little bit of effort. And now that seal is much further seated. In fact, it's properly seated at this point, way down inside the connector. So it, uh, it should seal and keep the moisture out from now on out. And look what we've got here. Here's our new speed sensor. It's slightly different than the old one. I'm gonna try an aftermarket sensor this time. Now the fact that the connector's slightly offset doesn't bother me at all. The only thing I'm concerned about is like from here down, that it's all the same length and it appears to be. So I'm just gonna install this and give it a whirl, see how well it does. I guess we can get this rag out of here now. And just an FYI, I just took a little bit of grease and put it on that O-ring before I'm going to insert this down into the transmission. I don't like to install O-rings dry. They can roll over and cause all kinds of problems. But it's quite simply just a matter of putting it down in there, except like with these speed sensors especially, make sure it's all the way seated down because if the speed sensor isn't pushed all the way down into the transmission and you go to tighten this, what happens is the whole thing gets into a bind and this will break this tab right off. So you gotta be careful with those, especially on Hondas. Oops, sorry. And you just wanna snug it. You don't need to tighten it so much that it breaks. Plug it back in, and uh, that's all she wrote. Don't forget to get that piece of heat back, hooked, hooked back up. And the intake air temperature sensor. Time for a test drive. How about before we roll this thing out of here, we check the oil. Hey, look at that. It's got oil in it. Slightly low, but better than no oil. All right, then let's clear these codes. Oh, 
Awesome. Okay, now astute viewers will note that the check engine light is still on. Well, the reason why is because that O2 sensor is still an issue. And uh, that's kind of a long story that I'm not going to get into here, but I'm just explaining why the uh, code is, or the, why the check engine light is still on. But as far as the speed sensor, we're going to go verify that that is fixed now. Okay, let's see if we got a speedometer. Looks like we're good. Shifting fine. Speedometer works. Uh, we know about the check engine light. That has nothing to do with the speed sensor. That's what this video is about, not the O2 sensor. So let's head back to the shop and wrap this up. Okay, well, uh, we now have a working speedometer again. The speedometer needle's not jumping all over the place anymore. Transmission seems to be shifting normally. Yet the uh, check engine light is still on for the O2 sensor as we saw. Uh, just briefly touching on what the problem is there. I, I put the new O2 sensor in the uh, exhaust manifold and during the process of the engine replacement I replaced a cracked exhaust manifold with an aftermarket one that apparently was not cast correctly or they didn't machine it enough uh, to accommodate room for the O2 sensor so actually when I screwed the O2 sensor into the manifold it sort of squished the end of it and as a result kind of broke the O2 sensor uh, so I went in and remachined that manifold but I have to wait till tomorrow to get a new sensor it's just kind of how it is and we've done videos on aftermarket parts and how we feel about that. However, the aftermarket speed sensor, which saved us quite a bit of money, works just fine. So I guess you win some, you lose some, uh, however you want to look at that. Uh, but as I said, that, that code is gone. The speedometer is now working correctly. As far as the intake air temperature sensor code, that has not come back. Um, and that was, that was a code for what I believe to be an open circuit. So I think somebody unplugged that with the key on is what happened there. So now that that's gone, um, if that comes back for that code, well, we'll have ourselves another video. But for now, we're just gonna move on down the road. Now, as far as testing of this sensor, if you run into this issue, I know as far as Honda's are concerned, this is a very, very common failure. Uh, in fact, I, I see it quite often and 98% of the time it is the speed sensor itself. Now, it could be a wiring issue or something else, so it's definitely worth looking into. Uh, I think unplugging the sensor and driving it and seeing that the needle wasn't going all over the place, I, I would consider that a valid test as far as isolating the issue. Um, as you can see, this was a physical failure of the connection uh, at the speed sensor that was caused by corrosion. Um, it's very important that moisture stays out of that, especially since the sensor sits up and down. Any moisture that can get down in there will stay in there. And, cause those terminals to corrode. So I did what I could to make sure that that weather uh, packing inside that connector was properly positioned and everything was in there well. And I'm sure that there's other testing that you could do. I suppose that you could also uh, leave the scan tool plugged in. Uh, my scan tool has live data capability and drive down the road and look at the speed sensor signal uh, and see what the computer is seeing as far as that's concerned. That might be another way to do it. But outside of that, I think what you're looking at is like maybe jacking one or both of the front wheels up and then taking a measurement at the uh, signal wire coming from the sensor itself while the, the car is running up on jack stands. Uh, that's, that's the other way to test it. But personally, like I said, if you run into this code, your speedometer is jumping all over the place, you're most likely going to need a speed sensor. But you can do the quick test of unplugging it first. All right, we've gone over that twice now. I'm starting to bore myself. So I will uh, say that uh, you can always visit me at EricTheCarGuy.com where you can uh, direct your automotive questions to our search function on the website. Just type in a couple of keywords there on the homepage and uh, you may come up with an answer. And if you don't, sign up for our forum. It's free. Ask the question over there and we'll do what we can to help you. Uh, I post videos here on Mondays and Fridays, so you can look for Eric the Car Guy videos then. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And I will close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I will see you next time.